Um, before starting, I just want to say that my presentation really sort of uh, gathers some key points from the report and the f from the project briefing. So to give you more time for questions and answers and discussions, um, I'll try to be very brief and I won't touch on all the points that are on PowerPoint. So just um, uh, calling your attention to some key issues we found. Uh, and, and some of these issues might be uh, of knowledge, but I think uh, th this report uh, plays an important role in bringing many of, of the issues in different thematic areas uh, together and, and making a case from a human rights, social development, and very importantly, an economic development perspective um, for why I it's important to invest in, in young people. Um, the first reason that it's very, uh, very, very obvious is that uh, the world ha now has the largest generation of young people aged between 15 and 24 in history, so around 1.2 billion young people. So just from the size of the population, it makes sense to, to put a lot of um, emphasis on uh, policies and programs that are geared towards them. And 90% of these young men and women live in developing countries. Um, so there's a huge window of opportunity uh, for international efforts uh, by donors, governments and uh, diversity of partners that we'll talk about later to substantially um, um, to gain reap the, the, the benefits of the demographic div <coughs> dividend and uh, of encouraging a educated, healthy and gainfully employed uh, population of young men and women. Um, uh, it makes sense from uh, an economic policy perspective to do that. Um, something that we really want to point out is that age can be a vector of inequality. So young people and young men and women um, are often excluded from access to financial resources, work opportunities, mm -hmm. social welfare mechanisms, decision-making spaces, just because of their age, um, given different cultural contexts. So um, it, it's important to ensure that they're given that space and that young people are very diverse, uh, gender-wise, location-wise, in terms of age cohorts within youth, and policy and programming needs to pay attention to that. So the report focuses on six different areas of investment in youth. Um, um, uh, the first one is um, post-primary education, and we, uh, we, we explain and we try to highlight some imp important examples of why uh, this is a key area to prioritize uh, in the post-2015 agenda, particularly in terms of high-quality education um, that uh, is uh, equitable and uh, relevant, particularly uh, for young people. And it, it has to be within and outside the classroom and include issues like life skills um, and sexual education, which is transformative and that, uh, that can enable young people have um, critical thinking and technical literacy, for example, that can uh, give them transferable skills to find uh, relevant economic opportunities and can then be transformative. But a very key point, as you will see in the box, is that there's very strong evidence about the, the economic dividends of investing in, in education in general, in particular in post-primary education. Um, uh, UNESCO, in its uh, report, latest um, education for all report um, that focuses on young people and um, economic opportunities says that, finds evidence to indicate that um, for every dollar invested in, in education, there's about um, between 10 and uh, $15 of um, a growth premium over a person's working life. So that's quite uh, important. Um, uh, another key dimension that we, we look at in the report is uh, work. And this includes formal employment, but also um, other avenues of, uh, of work for young people. There are 75 uh, million young people who uh, are unemployed in the world, but also very importantly, beyond that, is the quality of work that young people have. Um, young people are par particularly sort of affected by precar precarious and um, unstable working conditions. And within young people, particularly in marginalized groups and, and, and women, are um, affected by these problems. So um, th there is um, a, a very strong case from a human perspective and an economic perspective to ensure that there's uh, economic opportunities for young people. And this includes um, 
include uh, focusing on areas, for example, on agriculture that not enough attention is being paid to. 60% of uh, young people in, in Africa are Im uh, involved in agriculture. So ensuring that this becomes more productive and generates uh, real um, income uh, gains is, is, is an area of, of uh, attention. And also microfinance, there's um, a lot of, of new uh, NGOs and, and, and government policies focused on microfinance, but ensuring it reaches young people and that young people have um, mechanisms to access um, credit and collateral um, are qu quite important amongst others. Um, health, um, there's a lot of uh, work to be done in terms of sexual and reproductive health, um, particularly affecting uh, young girls um, who, for, for various reasons, including gender based uh, power imbalances and discriminatory social practices are affected by adverse um, circumstances um, uh, and that uh, lead to uh, sexual transmitted diseases but also early pregnancies and, um, and, and problems during um, childbirth and so on that have huge uh, social and economic consequences. Um, and for example, a study by um, Chaban and Cunningham uh, that looked um, across a number of countries found very strong evidence of the impact of um, on economic growth of um, girls having to stop going to education as a result of early pregnancies. Um, and and uh, they, they found, for example, that there's um, a growth, uh, I can see the small box on the side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the in, in Burundi, uh, for every additional year of secondary education, there's a lifetime earning equivalent to 68% uh, of the country's um, GDP, so that's massive, and it just illustrates in some countries how how additional um, work on um, economic, ec um, sexual, and, uh, and reproductive rights has impact on on economic growth. But there's also other areas that sometimes are unexplored in terms of um, uh, health for young people, in including um, those that have consequences during their life and, 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 and into the future that have costs for public health and others. Um, and of course, for for young people, young people uh, within their lifetime. Um, so uh, then, there's a key issue uh, that's growing on the agenda: sustainability and climate change. Um, and young people uh, will be amongst the most affected by climate change um, through throughout their livelihoods, um, and because it, it affects it affects um, sort of their income generating oppor generation opportunities. There, there's huge migration from rural urbans to rural to urban areas, particularly of young people, with challenges to um, how they adapt to their living conditions, to the economic opportunities they might find, family breakdown, etc. So this is a very important area. But more importantly, um, young people can be really instrumental to changing the trajectory of, of these um, the climate change impacts by understanding and improving resource management. And many examples um, are out there in terms of how young people are involved at the community level to, to enhance um, uh, disaster risk reduction and um, uh, mechanisms and uh, enhance understanding of how this can be transformative and also the sort of through climate finance and other mechanisms there's a huge area of growth in terms of economic opportunities in the green economy for young people so that's also an area that that requires a lot of uh, investment and attention then conflict and crime uh, I'll just touch on a couple of quick points um, uh, the Mainly, uh, although there's a lot of uh, um, information about the role of, of young people in co conflict and violence, more importantly is that the vast majority of young people are not involved in conflict and crime, but rather in peace building. And um, through civic engagement, there's a huge space for young people to contribute to, to ensuring stability and reduce violence. And in a context where a lot of aid is going to security and, uh, and peace building, investment in youth is a key way to ma making sure that it's um, econo economically effect, uh, cost effective. Um, lastly, in terms of the thematic areas, civic engagement, and we will talk much more about that in terms of participation, but the key issue here is th that young people um, that learn about civ civic uh, engagement from a young age can really sort of contribute to accountability, governance, and democracy. So um, those are, again, key issues on, on most donors' agenda, so working with young people from a young age um, is, is very relevant. Um, I'll, I'll skip this example, but um, in the report you can find several cases um, uh, of, of ways in which investment in young people, examples of how they have really resulted in, in, in positive 
outcomes across these areas. And this was just a um, case study that that relates to that. I'll, I'll go to the um, to a very important point in terms of uh, young people in the post-2015 agenda. Um, the post-2015 agenda, as we will talk about later, is likely to center on issues around economic growth, poverty reduction, human development, environmental sustainability, governance, and democratic values. And all of these issues are very much related to all the thematic areas that we have uh, just mentioned in relation to youth. So it seems obvious that they need to be looked at through a youth lens and ensure that these different areas, um, including through relevant targets and indicators, um, address the issues that are relevant for young people. Uh, so another very important takeaway point is that today's young people will actually be tasked with carrying out the the agenda in, in the future. Um, uh, so they need to be involved uh, and, and participate so that it, it becomes um, meaningful and transformative. Uh, we have some uh, recommendations and conclusions. Um, you can find them in, in the project briefing. I'll just touch on a couple. Um, what I just mentioned in terms of ensuring that the youth focused, um, that there are youth focused targets and indicators in the post 2015 <laughs> agenda and sort of working towards that end in, in the, the coming. Um, months is, is very relevant. Improving in particular education and work opportunities for youth are, are crucial areas that have impact on young people, um, on, uh, on children and also on adults and, and the el elderly in, in terms of ensuring sustainable economic growth that, um, that, is dis that can then be distributed amongst generations. And just very lastly, um, the, the pointing out to the re relevance of having equitable opportunities for young men and women uh, paying uh, attention to the differences and the gender differences and how those need to be addressed in policy and programming and the need of disaggregated data by age, gender, disability and other factors that influence the risk of youth inclusion and that need to be captured in, in order to enhance policy and program design and, and there's a strong role that donors can play in ensuring that this data is gathered uh, and used um, both in, in government policies but in also in donor action. Um, so I'll Thank end there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paolo.